decide how you're going to work around them. No. <laughs> you you know figure that out later. Just get rid of them now. Yeah. Um, and you know it. I don't know. It is tough. They they had. We have seen CLG just running such fantastic late game comps and just you know controlling the entire match, both against MTW and then that game against Derpers. Um, they they're never letting their enemies to have an opportunity to get involved, and so. You know, Derpers, they want to get those ultimates off. They want to get the initiation with TF and with Nocturne. And CLG's just playing so safe, they don't allow it to happen. The double kill on Jax early, though, oh, yeah. really hurt. So, um, you know, without that double kill, maybe it's a different game. We do see a Nautilus ban from uh, or Derpers. Shen going to be banned from... Uh, Sorry, Shen or D or Derpers ban Shen. So, you know, they obviously don't want to see that. And then the Nocturne ban from CLG. So they, you know, recognize, all right, Nocturne is one of the threats that they have. So if they ban, uh, actually, they ban Maokai. So Ooh, no, no, I like this because last game CLG EU banned out Urgot. So now Derpers has a choice. Do we ban we have to ban out Urgot or Kogma? Otherwise, they're going to have the same comp that they had earlier. And the CLG banned out Nocturne because they don't want to have the back line dash available to Derpers. Now, this is actually kind of like a, a genius set of bans here from CLG. So, Urgot's ban, we should see... No, I, I, I mean, I definitely understand the Nocturne ban from CLG. I'm just saying, yeah. um, Derpers, you know, Maokai helped CLG a lot, but it wasn't really the big deal for their team. They could have run another aggressive jungler and been just as fine. The damage reduction did help them a little bit, but it, it wasn't key. And actually, uh, Urgot as well, you know, banning out Urgot... Urgot is a really strong AD bot, but it allows them to have Cog. They will be able to pick up Jax. We'll see. Maybe Derpers is going to look to grab Jax. And so they know, all right, you know, CLG, they have that first pick. We have the second and third. Uh, going with Malzahar, maybe. So Malzahar, you know, the suppress is definitely going to be huge on yeah. someone like Jax. And uh, then they do have that, you know, early game snowball potential with the suppression. The only issue is Malzahar is stationary and he's kind of short range. So if they allow, you know, if CLG goes Jax again uh, and then jumps into the middle of, you know, Malzahar, he can just burst him down. But it is a lot better AOE damage, and so it, you know, having that really strong AOE team. Oh, Kenan actually, well, they're hopping around. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to see. <laughs> but if 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 they do decide to take Malzahar in order to make the most of that suppress, you usually see a lot of teams also picking up Warwick in combination. So I think they don't want to go ahead. If they, if they wanted to do that, they would not pick them up both as yeah. their first two picks. So we have Kenan. If they still do decide to go Mal's Warwick, they're going to grab him for the third and fourth, and we can establish Kennen as a top lane. But by putting, by picking Kennen first, we still leave it kind of ambiguous. Oh, is he going to go top? Is he going to go mid? We don't know. Well, Kennen is a very safe top lane, and Kennen versus Jax is a pretty even uh, matchup. We have seen it a number of times recently. Um, if CLG decides to go Jax once again, they're kind of sitting there thinking. And right now, the issue is not only do we have Kennen, so Kennen in team fights has that AOE control, which those stuns will hurt Jax a lot. Uh, but then they also have Blitzcrank, and so if Jax is being aggressive up front, all of a sudden Blitzcrank pulls him even further back into his team, has the silence, has the pop-up, is able to burst him down, not worry about it. And that Blitzcrank is actually the, probably the biggest key for how they're going to affect Jax in this game. But um, Kennen versus Jax, and so it looks like it will be a Jax. Kennen has the range harass, and you want to get harass on Jax to kind of shut him down from farming, slow harass. So Kennen does have uh, harass, and if... Kennen can hold two charges on Jax. If Jax decides to leap strike in, Kennen has a shuriken right to the face, gets off that stun, is perfectly fine, can be safe. But However, the issue is that, uh, oh, so oh. it's actually going to be Kennen mid. Um, it's going to be rematch yeah. top lane, Jax versus Aurelia. And not, so, yeah, not sure how I feel about this. Yeah, they, it, well, it worked well oh. last game. I mean, Aurelia. Whoa, hold on here. You got oh, so it's it's going going to rise. It's going to AD Kennen. Kennen yeah. And bot with Blitzcrank. Wow, so a complete switch up, and I, I'm actually really liking the team that they have right now. So what they have going for them is it's a super tanky team. Aurelia versus Jax uh, did pretty well last game. The concern is obviously that you saw Wicked holding back a little bit, and he didn't really want to dive onto Aurelia as much as I feel like he normally would have because he had the threat of Nocturne and TF. Now there's no threat of Nocturne or TF. Um, so, you know, with, with that out of the situation... Maybe Jax can be a little bit more abusive in that top lane. However, they have the late game scaling of the Nivea. Oh my gosh. And that was the concern. We didn't ban the Nivea. Froggen was always going to pick a Nivea. And so, uh, Derpers, they have the late game of Rise. They have a really tanky team that can dive onto Kog'Maw. 
can also burst down Jax, and that snare of Rise is going to work very well against Jax. You snare him, you get you know your damage off, you can take him down. So Rise versus Jax works very well. However, Anivia versus the short range team. Anivia works so well against Rise, uh, you know, almost as a counter against Rise. And in team fights, you wall off Rise, you wall off someone in the team. Uh, now all of a sudden you can burst them down. And so that Anivia pick is going to be very strong. We won't see the Zillion revive onto Jax. So that is one threat is that, you know, if they can burst down the carries, there's not going to be the issue of the revive. And then we have the Shaco as well. So all out aggression from Derpers. Uh, Shaco, just one of the strongest ganking junglers in the game. He obviously falls out really quickly into team fights, yeah. but he will have some assassin capabilities versus Kog'Maw. And if he can get kills early, I really hope, is he actually going to be running Ignite? Ignite he might, might be doing that. He's, he, he needs. Wow. He needs, here's, the thing, here's the thing with Shaco. Shaco jungle, very powerful. You can grab a real quick level 2 and then hop in a lane. Real quick level 3. You can real grab level a level three. 3 in you know 30 seconds. But here's the thing. He needs those early kills. Otherwise, he just falls behind so much. Because in order to set up those kills, it's a really big time commitment. You need to have the positioning just right. And really good ward coverage will just completely blow your cover. If you have you know good wards put up in a, you know far away enough from your lane to know when he's coming because he's not going to you know hide in a bush waiting for you and then mm -hmm. go stealth. He's going to stealth before he comes in the bush and continue the rest of the journey on in. And, or even then, just a pink ward in the middle of the lane will sometimes be enough warning for you to get out of there. But if we we, not, we have an acknowledgement here. If we do not get the early kills on Shaco, he's going to fall really behind, and this strat could easily fall apart. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult to ward against Shaco. Um, you know, obviously, pink wards will never really work because he just has too much mobility with that, you know, yeah. kind of a jump that he has. Um, so it's going to be tough. And both teams have a really strong level one. And against Shaco... We have the threat from CLG where they have Anivia and Alistar. And Anivia and Alistar is a really strong level 1 combo in that Anivia, you throw the skill shot blind into the bush, it gives you vision, and you get the stun. And then Alistar obviously following it up. However, on the other team, Blitzcrank, he has his shield. He's obviously one of the strongest level 1s. Rise is very strong. We have Poke from Kennen. Um, so I'm curious uh, curious whether or not CLG is going to want to engage or if they're going to just sit back and be like, oh, we can't really risk it. And if, if they sit back then, you know, we will have the threat of Shaco, and we actually see, you know, we do have the Alistar for CLG, so that is going to be a really aggressive uh, jungle as well. But Shaco is just so devastating. I think Shaco, if he counter jungles Alistar at all, because Alistar kind of is vulnerable to counter jungling, uh, so if he starts blue and then goes over to... Um, uh, or goes down to the red, that could be well. Or he could go up to his own red and then be in a perfect position to gank Wicked top. And that's going to be really yeah. difficult for Wicked to deal with. Having the slow from Aurelia and the slow from Shaco and the Ignite, that's two Ignites top lane. They are looking to get a lot of kills early, and they have the potential to do it. Uh, and nearly everyone with Ignite here on Team Derpers, with the exception of Blitzcrank. But yeah, I think we're more than likely going to be seeing Shaco mm -hmm. start red because we saw what happened in Jack's last game. We want to just ensure that he just we can just shut him down as effectively as we can. However, we still have to worry a little bit because we still have Kog'Maw in the bottom lane with a Soraka right. who has the heal. We have the armor. We're going to be you know it's we're not going to get as much uh, damage onto uh, Anticog as we would like to, but we will still have the slow. We may actually still be able to to work it out, but. If Kog'Maw is left unchecked with Sirocco, we have the constant infuse of mana. And once Kog hits six, he'll be able to keep harassing you know, like he's done before and get very well farmed up. And it's Shaco's going to need to be omnipresent here. I mean, yeah. he's going to need to buy the move five boots. He's going to need to, you know, possibly even get like you know, early like zeals and stuff just so he can have as much movement speed as possible so we can have a presence in all three lanes. He is a very huge task. Yeah, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, you know, Derper's just doing such an effective job. They think that they have this Jackson Cog strategy countered out, and the concern is how much control CLG has with Alistar and Anivia. They have so much team fight control. Obviously, they have the late game. Late game is theirs. Um, however, you know, we have a lot of kill potential. We have a great mid game for Derper's and bottom lane Kennen. AD Kennen, you know, uh, always talking about AD Kennen. AD. Uh, Kennen, you have really high base stats, and that's one of the things that allows you to do AD Kennen, uh, is that he has the highest base stats of most ADs in the game. 
you have a good attack range. It's um, you know average with most other ADs. You have a lot of burst potential. However, Kog'Maw has a much longer attack range than Kennen. We'll be able to just harass them down, and that's the concern. Cog and Soraka, they have their harass advantage over Blitz and Kennen. However, if Blitz lands a hook, he gets the pop-up, and then Kennen follows it up with a stun. There's a lot of kill potential there, and that's going to be dangerous. We do see CLG is going to probably be coming around this backside and coming up through blue through the river, which is a really aggressive ganking path. Uh, it's hard to, you know, kind of get vision for. And so we see the box for Shaco originally, so he can have a little bit of vision. They are playing kind of defensively. Um, you know they don't want to allow the invade by CLG, and I'm really I really thought that we were we were gonna see Shaco start off on uh, red, but we actually see here. I think I think I think we actually be starting off in blue. It's like oh man, they totally think that we were gonna be starting in red. We're probably gonna get invaded in red. Let's start in blue instead. But actually, that's quite the opposite here. We actually have all of CLG ready here. We may actually see an invite. Uh oh, we actually uh, Jerry is here. We have an instant. We have a, we have a inkling that they may be in the bush, and they were in that bush, but here we are. We see them all now. They moved just in time to not get pulled, and now the cover has been blown, so we're actually going to be a, a little bit uh, safer here for Shaco to go ahead and secure this blue. Yeah, and so pretty fortunate that they actually didn't see the Blitzcrank Cook. And um, so, you know, they would have had vision of the Blitzcrank Cook. They would have seen it. However, it wouldn't uh, show up on the map. So because it doesn't show on, up on the map, no one was looking there. Otherwise, they would have just, you know, rushed the Dragon Pit. And um, if they could have rushed the Dragon Pit, trapped them in there, then obviously they have a lot of, you know, uh, potential to grab those early kills. And that could have been devastating for Derpers. But Shaco will be fine. We'll be able to pick up this blue buff. And then is probably going to transition to top. So he's going to have the fast level three. He's going to have the quick gank on uh, Jax with that red buff and that ignite. And Jax is going to have to be very defensive about that. So, um, you know, I'll, it'll be interesting to watch how he's going to deal with it. He's running right down towards this red buff. Wants to see if he can counter it because he's thinking that Alistar is going for uh, blue. Now he sees the Wraith is gone. He knows that Alistar has already taken the red. So he's warning his team right now. Alistar has the red. He's going to have aggressive gank soon. And uh, Shaco doesn't have the position, but actually there's the pull and the Ooh. exhaust onto Crepo. Crepo uses his flash to get out of there. Uh, so at level two, that would have been a kill, but fortunately he is able to survive. Also want to note that the ward down here in the tribush actually serves a double purpose. Like if they were trying to come on down, that, was, that ward was put there preemptively thinking that uh, Shaco was actually going to go ahead and come around oh, the mid. long way. Oh, my yeah, bad. Yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> well, I, got, for a second, I was like, Shaco's jumping in. And no, I, rise, I, you're in danger. Wait, yeah, you're on the I, same team. I realize they're on the same team, but <laughs> what it does do is it, it allows Shaco to get stealthily back, and so they don't oh. know where Shaco is right now, and he's looking for that red buff, but uh, Snoopy, he's looking for a little bit of an advantage, and so he saw... You know, he hasn't seen Shaky yet, and because of that invis uh, that Shaco had, he's actually going to be coming in for the counter. He does have the pulverize. Shaco has to deceive out of there, uh, and so Red is very close to going down, but oh. Jax is here as well, which means they have control over the red buff. They do have to watch out for Rise, but if they can get that red buff onto Jax or even just steal it, it's going to be huge. But Rise walking right into Jax, he gets off of his uh, dodge, and there's actually the stun. The flash uh, frost does not hit because we had the forest. However, they were able to steal that red. So Red going on to Alistar, he gets the refresh and preventing Shaco from getting it. So that hurts a lot of Shaco's ganking potential. And Alistar, because he knows Shaco wants to kill top and shut down Wicked, Alistar probably will focus on top lane a lot. But we got Jerry here actually coming right back in once again on Soraka. And we do actually have the grab, but will we have the damage to able to finish it off? You know, we actually have Kennen just barely getting away, Soraka barely getting away. But you know, it's okay for the support to take a little bit more damage than the AD, but Kennen is going to have no choice but to actually go back, leaving Jerry here just alone a little bit in all this time. Yellow Peach is going to stick around and farm. And you know what? Now we see Shaco. He's been denied quite a bit, just hitting level 3 now. We've got a while to catch up. And you know what, Snoopy? We've done the job. Mission successful. We're shutting down at Shaco. We've stolen the red, and that's really what they're, what, you know, one of the main objectives for them right now is just shut down Shaco in the jungle, keep him away from buffs, because if he ganks with the red buff, it's going to be that much harder to try and get away. Yeah, and you saw the kill potential they have bottom. They almost picked up the Soraka, but the uh, range advantage that Cog has, it denied Kennen from getting in there, able, not able to get the first blood, right. uh, because, you know, Cog would have taken him down. And so Col uh, Yellow Pete almost able to grab that with that harass. Wicked actually coming mid, so with Alistar, we have a double gank, and Wicked is going to be able to get the stun, and we actually have the stun, the flash in, and he is going to jump, and then the headbutt pulverize from Snoopy. There is the awesome combo. They're able to burst down Rise, and Rise with the uh, flash down from earlier goes down quickly, so the first blood going to CLG. 
And also, the, the, one of the big reasons, too, why they had three members there is that what Shaco can also do very effectively is counter gank. He's like, oh, you're ganking my teammates. Well, I'm here, I'm invisible, and I'm in the neighborhood. But, you know, even then, we still have a little bit of an outnumbering situation because we had three members of CLG there in the mid, and now Snoop is now back down bot lane. We got the headbutt into the wall and the pulverize. Cannon is exhausted. We should be able to take him out pretty easily there as well. And CLG, they're doing pretty good right now, and Shaco has not been doing a whole lot in this game so far, which, and you know, this is about the time where we'd expect, you know, hopefully have, you know, a kill or two on Shaco already. He's only been farming. We only have move five boots and potions, and that's it. Yeah, and Shaco can be so aggressive in the jungle, but Snoop A out jungling Tallo, just really awesome play. Uh, Jax is going to be finding this top lane against, you know, Aurelia. Aurelia won't be able to shut him down without the Shaco help. And so, you know, to be able to get that counter jungle early and then have the aggressive ganks that Alistar has, if you cannot allow Shaco to get in the game, uh, then very quickly he's going to fall off through the mid game. He is coming mid, though. He did deceive into Froggen, does get the slow, but unfortunately wasn't able to That's get the snare it. from Ryze. Look who's here, though. Oh. Snoopy's not too far away. We see Shaco wandering on over into the jungle, but Snoopy's actually going to get the positional advantage here. He walks into bush, but he was spotted just barely by Tal. Yeah, so he is going to get out of there. Not going to have another gank, um, you know, accomplished. But even so, a 2-0 advantage. He does, uh, when he goes back, he with those assists, he is going to have, you know, his gold pretend done. So, um, you know, that's going to be nice. He can have a, a fast uh, Philosopher's Stone for that Shirelias later. Um, and then just continue up this pressure. And we do see a ward coming down from Aurelia. Recognizes that the threat of an Alistar gank is huge at this point in time. And uh, because it's starting to come to that seven minute mark, I'm you know curious whether or not we'll see an invade for that blue. But I think that Derper's team is a little bit too strong right now that even with the early advantage, CLG won't want to risk it. Yeah, and also right now we see bot lane for Derper is actually pushing up pretty hard. Same thing for mid too. And you know one of the strengths of Shaco is to really you know get an opportunity on a lane that's pushing out a little bit too far. We actually got to grab it once again. We got the Soraka, but we're not going to be able to to connect a whole lot of damage with it. But still, it's a lot of harass forcing the heal onto her, and that's one less heal that's actually going onto Kogma and more mana burned as well. Yeah, and with that Soraka, the armor buff, they just don't have enough burst. And because the big thing is the harass from Kog'Maw, uh, Kennen isn't able to play as aggressively as he would want to. Oh, he's going to walk into the ward, so Soraka oh, right on the, the other wall. side, and then misses the flash, and now Kennen is coming in. Kennen is only level 5, and now doesn't have enough damage to take Soraka down. But in the meantime, we have Alistar, and we have Anivia, and all the while, Yellow Pete is attacking Arthana and Snoopy. The flash in, followed by the headbutt and the pulverize, they get Once the quick again. kill there. Uh, but we got the pull in from Yopi. Will we actually be able to die to this tower? I don't think it's going to be happening, but we got the slow. We got more damage going on Jerry. Man, we got we got a very mo Here's the oh, thing. Oh, wow, like, and Jax yeah. jumping onto Aurelia. He is going to back off for a second. Yeah, we got. I mean, we have we have a very uh, team fight oriented uh, CLG here. They recognize, like, man, we got a, we have a shake. We have a Shaco in our miss. We don't want to be, you know, getting surprised by him. We don't want to have to deal with any of it. We have to. We need to move as a group because. If we, if we still manage to get a kill, we don't want anyone to fall behind, we don't want any loose ends, we don't want to give any opportunities for Shaco to pick off members who have been too hurt in teamfights. We need to all be here as a group, as a pack, and they're doing that very successfully. And we actually see once again, um, you know, Wicked is going to be going for that fast Bilgewater Cutlass. We do have Aurelia going for the, uh, the two Dorans early, so that's going to help mid. Uh, Shaco trying to get off ganks, but everyone from it. CLG is just so safe. He hasn't had any opportunities, and that is just devastating. Uh, the blue is still up, so nine minutes in, and he hasn't taken his blue yet. Um, so that's, you know, a, a two minutes of missing the jungle timer, which, you know, slows them down a little bit. Uh, Rise, he is fortunately going to be able to grab this blue now, so that'll help with mid. But uh, I'm curious how that Doran's is going to work out against Jax. Now, it, it does give Aurelia more killing potential and more fighting potential. But now Jax, once he finishes that build water, is going to have the sustain advantage over Aurelia. And so, you know, we, we will see, like last game, he can sustain it there. But we actually have Blitzcrank coming in quick, mm. Shaco coming in. Unfortunately, the hook does not land and CLG is safe once again. That's the most uh, inopportune time to miss that hook. But we do have uh, Sh uh, Shaco now coming in. He is stealth. And we got the ult coming in from Ken. We are now trying to focus on Yelpy as much as we can. We do have the Ignite, but we do have the heals from Soraka, keeping them safe. And see, that's the thing. Since Shaco's been shut down this this whole time, that was his real, like, this is his first, like, real gank attempt. We're almost 10 minutes in. He's got boots and a long sword. I mean, we, it's, it's like we're now past the point where it's like you know really early game like pre six damage it, it's gone he hasn't built anything he has no real damage right now he's only there really is like as a slow 
And now because they know those ultimates are down and they know that Shaco, you know, is behind, uh, they are actually pursuing this blue, so or this dragon. And we see Wicked coming down once again. Aurelia following this time. So Aurelia is actually missing out on a lot of farm top. But if they get a fight, then it is well worth it. Um, unfortunately, you saw bot lane. They, were that, they wanted that kill. They were kind of all in on it. They, we had multiple flashes, multiple ultimates. They wanted to get in on it, unfortunately. Um, you know, they weren't. And so CLG, knowing that they don't want to fight here for a second, they're fine with pushing mid and just stalling derpers for a little bit. Oh, but we do have the bliss here. We have an inkling that they're going to be in that side uh, bush there by the river. So we got another ward going down. If we can get a grab, if we can isolate a member of CLG, that'd be very nice. Hope preferably not Alistar. But uh, we also have more wards, and uh, we got an early oracles here on Snoopy as well. Just so, hey, you know, we can also see Shaco with that thing too. Good purchase there on Snoopy. But we got Jerry with the flash and the grab, and we're getting nothing. Wicked just jumps right into the middle of the fight. We got to take down Jerry first, and we also got Blade Master. He's a little bit too far out from the rest of his team, but Snoopy is still in the middle. We got the ult popped from him well, so he's gonna be a little more safe. And we also get a double kill here on the Jax onto Aurelia, and Hogdon is trying to get away, but he can't. And Yellow People will be able to finish that up. We do have the egg. The that frog is going to be coming back. It's that was no just deal. such great fight control by CLG. And so Snoopy getting into the middle of the enemy team. Wicked yeah. jumping in for the quick kill and then flashing out. And so because Snoopy was in the middle of the team, they're all focusing him down. He has his ultimate. It doesn't matter. So they weren't able to get the yeah. damage on the carries that they needed to. And so CLG keeping all of their members safe while bursting down targets that they needed to. They're able to pick up the kills. Yeah. They're able to grab the dragon. And it's a 5k gold advantage already, only 12 minutes into the game. We're actually pushing down this tower too. Um, I'm thinking that they're going to leave it up because they have, they know that they have the harass advantage, so they are going to leave it up. Uh, they know they have the harass advantage, so they can just continue allowing Kog'Maw to out-farm Kennen um, and then just control that lane. We see Kennen transitioning top lane, but we have a lot of bursts from... Uh, wow, actually, we're going to see a lane swap, so... They know they can't lane bot anymore, and actually the burst from Ken, uh, Jax is going to be fine. But now they can try and shut down Kennen, so they know this isn't working. What we're doing is not working. We can't allow CLG to beat us this way. Let's swap lanes, see if we can shut down Jax at the very least, and then go from there. Well, that was their objective this entire time, too. It was like, you know, let's get Shaco and see if we can't try and shut down this guy. And it's still not working, so it's kind of like a last-ditch effort. You know, this is all other options have been exhausted here. So the last possible thing they can do, let's let's lane switch, let's 2v1 him top lane, and let's see if we can't further shut him down. But you know what, he's already doing really well for himself. 2-0-2, two, oh, and, two, and you know what, let's get a Mage Eyes. Why not? Let's get a Mage Eyes on Froggen, who cares? And this is actually the Froggen, the Super <laughs> Anivia build. So um, he does, he goes tier, Mage Eyes, and Warmogs. And so oh, oh God. you go, you have the tier, obviously, <laughs> for the Mana Pool. And the Mana Pool is huge on Anivia. You need to get that Mana Pool. The Warmogs, which is, you know, obviously such an astounding thing to this imagine. Anivia, not Mundo. Um, you know, all right, so <laughs> they're using Anivia for fight control. They already have Kogma and Jax. Kogma and Jax are both going to have so much damage output. It doesn't matter how much damage Anivia has. She doesn't really scale that well with damage. She does okay with damage, but it's not fantastic. We actually have the pull, and Jax going down pretty quick. He is going to be fine. Yep. Uh, Alistar coming in be from behind. Jax is a little bit too low, so I don't think they have a lot of kill potential, but Kennen actually diving it with the Ignite. Jax is getting very low, but they can't finish him off. He's jumping onto Jay Ree, and now the Headbutt Pulverize will hold him underneath there, so they do grab Jax, but uh, he is going to get out, and actually Anivia coming up as well to try and trap in Kennen here um, is kind of out of position. Oh, man, Arathena has got really nowhere to go here. But we see Froggen. We're still in pursuit. We're starting to see if we still can't go ahead and connect that kill. We just needed one more hit, but we're going to see Kennen deny at the tower. Executed. Executed. Yeah. And so you see bottom lane, Cog is just way too much harass for Aurelia to deal with. So maybe they can shut down Jax a little bit, but they're going to shut down Aurelia a lot more. And Aurelia needs to be tanky in order to engage on Cog. Uh, now, so back to the build, uh, they know they already have damage with Jax and Kog'Maw, so they use Anivia for disables. They use it for the Flash Frost, they use it for the wall, they use it for that team fight control, so you need mana pool for that. Right. Do you need damage? No, you don't. So uh, he goes for the Warmogs, so it's it's actually, if you look at the numbers, tier, Magi's, and Warmogs, it's very similar to buying two Rod of Ages, except it actually gives you better stats. And so, um, you know, he does get... Plenty of tankiness, so he can be safe. Oh, we actually have the pull. Froggen going to be going down very quickly here. Not going to be able to egg him with the flash. Uh, so he is going to be safe in fights. And then the Magi's, if he gets, you know, kills, obviously it will give him some nice uh, AP for yeah. the value. And that was really like the only time they had to try and get another kill on Froggen because egg 
Still had just a slight little bit of cooldown, but once we get back into lane, Egg will be back up. Egg did go, Egg did pop during that last uh, dragon fight, so it was still down for a little while, but now that it's back, now they've kind of lost their opportunity here to try and take down Anivia in mid. So, yeah, now we're, now we're getting tanky, now we're getting all the AP and mana we need, and Jax is just going to go ahead and yeah. do a beast. Alistar is going to be a beast. Everyone's going to be a beast. Hey, look at, you know, oh, yeah, we got the one more kill here on the Kennen in top lane. This lane switch is not working, man. Yeah, dropping down the smart ward so that Kennen uh, couldn't get the lightning rush and get yeah. away and maybe deny himself to another tower. But even so, he probably would have had the kill, but he just wanted to finish it. Uh, so it's an 8-1 to one advantage for CLG right now, and their late game is just so strong. Um, you know, there are a lot of advantages that you know we have on derpers and one thing is blitzcrank can always be a game changer if you get the right pull on the right person uh you burst someone down all of a sudden you have a fight advantage uh shaco can split push shaco can also take like baron very quickly uh as the game progresses we see a brutalizer wow the perfect wall from nice frog and able to save crepo there crepo being pursued <laughs> that was a really cool was wall. A good wall uh but you know so shaco i don't know he, he's going for the Brutalizer. That means that he's primarily looking to be an anti-carry. He knows he's behind. He just wants to be he's able really to sh try and shut down Kog'Maw. That's behind, his only hope. Behind is an understatement. He's got nearly just as much gold as Blitzcrank. He's really behind. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but his goal is with the crit, with the physical yeah. damage, he can try and shut down Kog'Maw in fights, and that's going to be what he wants to do. Rise obviously scales very well in the late game and works very well versus Jax. Uh, how much gold does he actually have? Is he So he is very close. Um, he's like 50 away from finishing his Glacial Shroud, and then he needs to get a Frozen Heart, obviously. Uh, and then that'll really help him a lot against all this physical damage. Since Anivia isn't building a lot of magic damage, but with Anivia and Cog, they still have a decent amount of magic, and they can just push right in. Wicked, actually, there's the Snare. Not going to allow him to get in, but the Flash from Snoope and the Headbutt. Venom Blade Master is very close to going down. We have Kog'Maw coming up. Kennen going to throw off the ultimate, but he's going down as well. And so that is two kills for free. Now they are still chasing. Actually, the stun, the Flash Ross grabs Blitzcrank. Froggen with the Hail Mary. Uh, and so they do grab three kills there. And their team is just so strong in fights right now. They want to come after this Rise. They're just yep. going to push down this mid tower. Three kills and four stacks. That Magi is getting uh, pretty hot there. Once we get to two more, if we can get one more kill for Froggen, then the Magi is paid for itself. Then it's free AP on all kills from that point out. And at this point, we're just farming. We're just pushing straight up mid. Yeah, and there's, there's nothing to stop them. They are going yeah. to get an inhibitor here. Uh, so Shaco pushing down bottom, you know, just wants to try and get some gold or try and not allow all the lanes to push. And Ryze is actually going with him. In the meantime, Aurelia jumping in along with Arthana. And I think that this is uh, yeah. the kind of surrender desperation. They know this game is over. Um, so jumping in doesn't really accomplish a whole lot there. This is an inhibitor for CLG. This could be game for CLG if they keep on pushing. They may just very well keep on going. We still got another They should seconds. be able to. Yeah. And he's like, Froggen's like, oh, I want to go back. And everyone's like, no, 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 we can win this. Just, just stick with us. You're going to keep on getting more. You don't need to go back to town to get more AP. We got a Blitzcrank here. Yeah, and so just the late game <laughs> potential for CLG is so strong. And that's one thing the CLG EU team and CLG NA team have in common is they have these great team fight control comps with Alistar, with Anivia. We have Arthana coming in. Unfortunately, he goes down very quickly. But we have yeah. the great team fight control. CLG EU. They're running it with, you know, Cog and Jax, obviously. Um, whereas we see a lot of Vayne for CLG with, you know, double lift on Vayne is so strong. Yeah. But, wow. wow, just really impressive games. All four of them, CLG, EU, you know...